Welcome back. And with us now to talk about some interesting facts about our great state is Joe Zweibel. He is the publisher of the Hartford Business Journal. Joe, good to see you in the program. Very nice to see you, Dennis. And we're Pleasure. here to talk about the uh, the book of lists, which I love to go through every year right. because it's you learn a lot about the state from this. And you and your staff go through all the numbers and you do all this research and you come up with some things. What are some of the trends you've noticed uh, because you've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Uh, are, are there segments of our state that are growing and those that are shrinking? You know, I think the interesting thing about Book of Lists is that it is a great snapshot of the marketplace. And we all sort of understand some of the macro trends and some of the changes that have happened over the last several years um, in Connecticut. And the, but I think sometimes you can get really overwhelmed by the specific data, right? And what we've tried to do really with Book of Lists is sort of take a, a sort of the 30,000 foot view and take a real snapshot of the marketplace. And the most important part of that I see is, and I think what our readers really come to look for, is those comparatives, right? To be able to look at the list of banks and not just to know that Webster is the biggest and People's United is number two, but also to understand who those steady eddy middle of the pack mm. players are and how they scale up against some of the big boys. And you know that sense of a snapshot of a picture of each of the sort of uh, niches that uh, are addressed by the book of lists, I think that's really where the magic happens for Let, us. Let's look at that uh, list of the banks. We have the top three of every category, but the top one, as you mentioned, was Webster Bank, and that was followed by People's United, and then United Bank. And of course, we should point out these are, are banks that are headquartered here in our state. Right. Correct. That's Not, right. Like, you know, obviously, Bank of America and Chase Manhattan are in our state. Right. Um, but, but they don't factor into this. Has this kind of held steady, these names at the top for the most you know, part? You know, they have for the most part. And I think we all understand that, you know, the, the, the role that Webster has played uh, in our state over many years. Um, you know, there are certainly areas like banking and finance where there are lots of folks who are in the, the, the um, milieu from outside the state um, who do play a role. But our focus tends to be, as you mentioned, specifically on Connecticut-based companies. Okay. And that sort of gives a different flavor, but it's the, it's, I think it's what our readers are, are looking for. From Next, us. we have largest colleges and universities, and no surprise here, UConn is at the top. Central Connecticut State University was second. This surprised me, the number three, post-University of Waterbury. Yeah. And uh, what's the criteria? Is it number of students or? You know, I think it is number of students. Um, you're talking to the person who sort of oversees the whole okay. process. If you wanted the specifics of how these lists are put together, you'd talk to Greg Board and I. Sure. However, I will say that, you know, what our editors have always tried to do is they've tried to find sort of the most obvious and the most logical way to sort of break up, um, you know, the different size breaks. Not everybody likes that and not everybody approves, but I think our editors sure do a really good job deciding on what the criteria are that they're listing. Next, we have largest manufacturing, United Technology. Stanley Black & Decker is number two, and the Command Corporation is number three. And interestingly enough, too, um, the top two, anyway, certainly have expanded right. in recent years. Right. And certainly with the United Technology story, there's a change there, and that might have, make that list look a little bit different next year. Um, the neat thing about the manufacturing list, of course, is that um, there's so much that's happening underneath, again, the top three players, right? right? There's so much that's happening in that supply chain um, that is related to those top three players that makes the manufacturing uh, 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 vertical in Connecticut just really, really an, an, an impressive place right now. The, and there's so much happening there. The next sector, we have largest hotels. Foxwoods, number one, Mohegan, number two, Stanford Marriott is the number three. None of the Hartford hotels were in the top three, but they, I believe, are five, six, and seven yeah. after that or something like that. They do come in right after that. Which though. is about what you would expect. Yeah. Right? Um, and this is fascinating because we were just talking to the lawmakers about expanding casino gambling. And the casinos, mm -hmm. of course, have the money right. to build these giant hotels. And who knows, maybe if there is one in Bridgeport, that will be making that top three list as well. I would think so. And we'll have to see how that plays out. And the hotel business, is, is, it, is it kind of holding steady, expanding? I mean, you know, it certainly seems that it's holding steady. Um, you would like to see it expand, of course. Um, but given the, the location of Hartford and its, uh, you know, ideal situation for sort of regional 
big regional meetings and sure. what we're doing down at the Connecticut Convention Center is just fantastic. And so you, you, I, I would say that that's a fairly robust place to be right now. We see um, uh, you know, also a lot of smaller hotels being built in some of the suburbs, like the, the Comfort Inns and those types of things. Those seem to be going up everywhere these days. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about the largest insurance companies in our state, the Travelers. Number one, the Hartford. Number two, and three, Aetna. Of course, big news that they're merging with um, with CVS. Um, was this a surprise at all? These, you know, that the, I mean, the Travelers number not really. I guess you right? know, I guess not really. I will say that I think it's it's a testament to sort of that um, the innovative spirit that exists in Connecticut. If you look at what's happening with that Aetna merger, yeah. that's very very interesting. And I think you know, if you look across all the industries that we cover at the Hartford Business Journal and that are mentioned in the uh, book of lists, specifically the newsmakers this year. What you see is a lot of innovation. You see a lot of people who are in the old economy sort of working on ways, much like the Aetna and Karen Lynch and what she's done, moving into new and different ways to deliver what they Very do. briefly, we're going to look at the list of the oldest companies. I love this because I love history, but this was amazing. The Fieldview Farm, 1639, the oldest company in Connecticut. That is absolutely amazing. Lyman Orchards coming into 1741 and the Hartford Current, sort of uh, one of the young kids here at 1764. <laughs> Joe Zweibel right. from the Hartford Business Journal. We always enjoy having you on and thank A you very pleasure. much. pleasure. Some great information, 1639. I like it. You know, how old's the Business Journal? 25 years 25. old right it's, now. It's growing. All right. Congratulations.